Here is a patient who has a right-sided mastectomy. It's easy to overlook this when you look at the chest radiograph because your eye is attracted to the lungs, the heart and the bones. So the left breast shadow is clearly seen here and it is absent on the right side. And it also accounts for the increased transradiancy of the right lung field. Note that the blood vessels are similar in number on each side, indicating it's a chest wall problem, not a lung problem that's responsible for the hypertransradiancy. This is another patient who has had a mastectomy, this time on the right side, and there are auxiliary clips. Now they are barely visible unless you look for them specifically, but it is important that when you look at the chest x-ray, you look at the patient from the end of the bed and you will then see the mastectomy. It is important in these patients to make sure that once you have seen the mastectomy, you look very carefully for rib lesions and lung lesions. When looking at this chest x-ray initially, radiologists could be forgiven for thinking that there was a left upper lobe collapse. There is a veil-like density projected over the left upper zone. But the problem with that diagnosis is that there is very little in the way of volume loss in that left hemithorax. Also, if you look carefully, you can see destruction of the anterior ribs. And just on the edge of the film, you can see the right breast shadow. And there is clearly a mastectomy on the left side. And this is a patient who has a chest wall mass causing this shadow and destroying the ribs. This is the CT of that same patient, demonstrating a soft tissue mass, replacing the left chest wall and destroying the ribs. A lower slice demonstrates that there is a mastectomy. So, on inspection of the x-ray, if you look and see that the breast is missing, you're more likely to arrive at the correct diagnosis, rather than suggesting a left upper lobe collapse. This is a chest radiograph in a 25-year-old male who presents with spontaneous chest pain. He has a hydropneumothorax. Here is the lung edge and here is a horizontal fluid level. And there's uh, clearly a mass lesion in the lung. Now, if you were to look at this patient from the end of the bed, it would become increasingly obvious that there was a problem with his right arm or his right shoulder. And in fact, he's had his humerus removed on account of an osteosarcoma. The diagnosis in this case is a metastasis from an osteosarcoma of the humerus. And osteosarcoma mets in the lung have a predisposition to cause pneumothorax because they grow close to the pleura. This patient has a scoliosis, but if you look as if the patient was at the end of the bed, you will clearly see lots of cutaneous nodules. And this is a patient with neurofibromatosis. And this explains the scoliosis. Here is another case of neurofibromatosis. There is a schwannoma in the left upper zone. It's arising from an intercostal nerve. The patient is kyphoscoliotic, and you can clearly see that there are neurofibromas on the skin. This is a young lady who has weight loss. Ignore the mediastinum and the heart and the lungs for a moment and just imagine what this patient would look like if you looked at them from the end of the bed. You'll clearly see that there is swelling of the right supraclavicular fossa, the right axilla by lymphadenopathy. And we've also got a middle mediastinal mass because the aortic knuckle has been made invisible and an anterior mediastinal mass 
and an anterior mediastinal mass. So the icing on the cake is that the diagnosis of lymphoma is made even more robust by knowing that the lymphoma is involving these lymph node groups. And you will only get that if you look at the x-ray as if you're looking at the patient from the end of the bed. So in summary, it's well worth spending time looking at the chest x-ray with a low power view. Or as I like to call it, looking at the chest x-ray as if you're looking at the patient from the end of the bed. In this way, you'll pick up a mastectomy, a missing arm, skin nodules, and lymphadenopathy in the neck and axilla. And when you see all of these features by looking at the film from a distance, you'll then be able to hone down on the film looking for evidence of metastatic disease in these two situations, neurofibromatosis in the case of skin nodules, and possibly lymphoma can be confirmed by looking at the edge of the film.